Women stay home from work. Girls miss out on after-school activities, not by choice, but because of a disease that affects one in ten. We're talking about endometriosis. It's an inflammatory condition where tissue that normally lines the uterus grows outside of that. It can be painful and it can go years undetected. March is Endometriosis Awareness Month. And joining me now is Dr. Allison Staley, a gynecologic oncologist with Rocky Mountain Gynecologic Oncology. Thanks so much for talking with us today. Why is endometriosis so commonly misdiagnosed or just missed entirely? Well, that's a good question. It really has a lot of vague symptoms that can come from it. And <clears throat> endometriosis really has a lot of different ways that it can present. One is that you can have very painful periods. Some people can actually have pain with passing bowel movements, urination, or with intercourse or none of those at all, actually. Um, so it can be a very vague presentation for some people. And it's also important for people to remember that not all pelvic pain is necessarily endometriosis. Is there a link between endometriosis and infertility? There absolutely is. So as you mentioned earlier, um, when you have that uh, growth of the endometrial lining outside of the uterus, it can actually spill into the pelvic tissues and it causes a scarring reaction over time. And that scarring can actually um, alter the anatomy and make it uh, more difficult anatomically for people to achieve pregnancy. Who is at risk for endometriosis? Is it any of us? Well, it's a good question. There's definitely no causal relation that we can point to one thing that's going to cause endometriosis. Certainly people having a family history of endometriosis probably puts them at a higher, uh, higher risk of that occurring. Other risk factors that have been documented are young girls having earlier onset of menarche or their menstrual periods starting, heavy periods that last more than seven days, or people who have anatomic abnormalities um, to the uterine tract um, can also be at risk for that as well. So if you're having some of these symptoms or maybe no symptoms at all and you have family history, what do you go in and tell your doctor? Absolutely. I think knowing your family history certainly is very important and bringing as much of that information to the table always with your providers is, is very relevant and important. I would also say being as clear as you can about what your pelvic pain is like, what's the duration, the quality of it, are there inciting factors to it, are there things that actually relieve it, to really give as much description to that as possible so that your doctor can actually make as accurate a diagnosis and appropriate treatment plan for you. And what happens if it's left untreated? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. Amazingly, some women may not even know they have endometriosis. They may not have symptoms. But for the ladies who do present with those symptoms, such as pelvic pain, infertility, difficulty with urination or passing bowel movements, these are definitely things that need to be addressed by your provider, if anything, to help from a symptom standpoint so that your quality of life is appropriate and that you also are able to engage with your regular um, activities. All right, Dr. Staley, thank you so much. You've given us a lot to think about. My pleasure, thank you. And we'll be right back.